Hi, this is Akhilendra Singh and in this tutorial, I am going to show you how to integrate Google Maps in your app, how to search for places, how to make custom markers, how to make information windows and uh, custom location button. So I have the app running here in the simulator and uh, we have a, a text box for search. We can click here and search for places. We see our location in the map and uh, we also see three markers which show nearby locations which are restaurants. Uh, these are just hard coded locations. Yeah, if we click on the marker, it goes in the center and shows up the information panel and uh, the information panel shows, the, shows an image, uh, the price at the restaurant and the name of the restaurant and uh, the border color changes of the marker and we can click on this uh, panel and it will take us to a new view uh, which will tell you all about the, the restaurant. So we can go back, we can click off the marker to hide it or we can click on the marker and if we click on this text box uh, it shows the search panel and it shows a marker of your place with the title and address and it shows three nearby restaurants so let's see how we can create this let's go ahead and create a new project in Xcode We are not gonna need the storyboard so I'm just gonna delete it and I'm also gonna create this main interface we need to install the Google map with cocoa part so let's open up the terminal and let's see where our project is I have the project here in Xcode app Google map tutorial so I'll just copy the path and CD to that directory okay so I'm in the project root directory and now first I will type pod in it now the pod has been initialized in the project so if I open it open it I see a pod file here and if I open it with sublime text or anything okay so this is the pod file this is what is already in the pod file now I'm gonna paste the Google map and Google places pod here okay so these are the three pods that you need to install so I will save the file and now I'll close it and now I will run pod install So it goes ahead and installs all the parts. Now we have to open this XC workspace and not the old Xcode project. So I'm gonna close the Xcode project and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna open this Google Map XC workspace. Now all the parts should be installed. Now we need to get an API key to use Google Maps in place. So go to Google Developers, open the first link developers.google.com and then go to Google API console. Now here it shows all the projects that you have been working on. Just click on it and uh, create a new project. Uh, call it whatever you want and create it. First change this to the project that you just created. So Google Maps 3. Go to I am in the Google Maps 3 now. Now we have to uh, enable two APIs for this. Google Maps and Google Places. So go to enable APIs and services and uh, here you see google maps sdk so go ahead and enable it now we also have to enable uh, google places api so search for google places google places api for ios click on it and enable it okay so we have enabled two apis for it now we need to get the credentials so go to credentials apis and click on this create credentials and api key so click on the api key and copy this key and paste it in your project just have it commented here i will use it in a while uh, now let's go to the this is the app i have created already and i'm gonna be copying pasting code from here so let's go to the app delegate and uh, see this is the code that we need so let's just copy everything from here we will replace this already existing api key with the one that we created now okay now we have to import google maps in google places so let's just copy this and paste it here 
So we are done in the app delegate. Here uh, we provide the API key for Google Map Services and Google Places client. These are the same API keys. And then uh, we get the window and we have this V controller here and uh, we get a UI navigation controller and we just uh, present the view controller. Now let's see what we, we need to create. This is the first view that we are gonna see on launching the app. This is gonna be the view controller. In the view controller, we have to create a search box and these map pins so we are gonna have a different view for this creating this map pin and then we have this information window so we are gonna have a different view for this we will first create the marker pins and marker information windows i have named the marker pin custom marker view so let's create a new file and call it custom marker view i need a suite file and uh, it's i'm gonna name it custom marker view this is created and uh, let's just copy everything from the custom marker view okay so i have the custom marker view here and uh, let's see what's here so in our custom marker view custom marker view is this one so in here we have an image we have the border and this small pin so here we declared the image uh, here uh, we have the image uh, we declared the border color here and the we give the image view a frame and a width of 50 and height of 50 uh, we are gonna give it give it a kernel radius of 25 border color is gonna be this color uh, border width is gonna be 4 uh, it clips to bounds so that the extra image doesn't so outside of the image view and to uh, place this pin on the bottom we are gonna need a label we are gonna place it at 45 uh, width 50 and height 10 uh, it's just gonna contain this character uh, font size is gonna be 24 border color and text alignment is gonna be center so we add the image view as a sub view and we add the label as sub view uh, we c you can create any view here we you want and just add it as a sub view and it will just show on the map we have an initializer here with a frame a image border color and tag this tag is gonna be useful when we want to know uh, which marker was clicked so we assign uh, image obtained from here to the self image border color and the tag uh, because view already has a property called tag so we don't need to declare tag here and then we call the setup views here so now let's create this information window this one so I have named it restaurant preview view. So let's create Swift file. Okay, now let's grab everything from restaurant preview view and paste it here. Okay, so I have the restaurant preview view here. I have the initializer here. We set the background color clear, uh, clips to bounce to true and mask to bounce true, and then we call the set of views. Uh, this is a setter for the data so when we call set data it changes the label text image view and the text of the label price and we pass title image and price here and now in setup views we have a container to hold all our views it is just simply a ui view then we have the image view and then we have the label title and label price so if you look at the image this is the image view uh, this is the title label and this is the price level and uh, we are gonna need an image price so let's grab all the images and put them in the assets so i have all the images here on my desktop i'm just gonna grab them and place them here so now it should show up an image here so we have got the image view we have got the label title and we have got the label mm -hmm. price declared here in closers and now we are gonna place the label title on top so continue view left anchor top anchor to top anchor right anchor to right anchor and the label title height is gonna be 35 so it's equal to a, equal to constant 35 and just like that we place the image view uh, it's left and left anchor is gonna be equal to left anchor top anchor is gonna be the label title bottom anchor right anchor is gonna be right anchor of the view bottom anchor is gonna be bottom anchor so it's gonna stretch all the way from label title bottom to the bottom of the container and uh, label price is going to hang in the middle of the this image so it's it's center x anchor is going to be center x anchor of the view uh, it's center y anchor is going to be the image view center y anchor and width anchor is going to be constant 90 height anchor is going to be constant 40 so that's it for this restaurant preview view uh, we just have an image a level title and a level price 
uh, but you can have any view here you want and it will show on the map so now we also need a detail view to show this so let's create this one also uh, I have named it details VC so let's create now details VC file new file it's gonna be a UI view controller okay so I have the details VC here now let's grab everything where details VC and paste it here okay so I have the details view controller here let's see what we have got in details view controller so we have an image view here uh, we have a title level we have a price level and we have a description level so we are gonna see how we can create them and also we are gonna need uh, as UI scroll view so that we can scroll because if you don't uh, have a scroll view uh, this view is not gonna scroll itself just because the content is beyond the screen you have to put it in a scroll view so we have the scroll view here so let's see uh, what everything we need to declare here uh, we need a scroll view so we declare a scroll view here we don't want to see vertical scroll indicators and horizontal scroll indicators so we set that to false then we have a container view whenever you have a my scroll view you uh, have to have a container view otherwise the scrolling doesn't work uh, i don't know why is that this container view is going to take up the whole of the my scroll view and uh, anything that you uh, have to put in the scroll view you have to put it as a sub view of this container view and then the scroll view is gonna work so i have the image view here we assign an image to it then we have level title level price and level description and then here uh, my scroll view we add the my scroll view as a sub view my scroll view stretches all the way from top to bottom and left to right so you assign the top anchor to top anchor left to left right to right anchor bottom to bottom anchor and we set the content size high to 800 this is the estimated uh, content size for your uh, contents if the content size is less than the screen size then it's not gonna scroll if your content height is uh, more than the screen height then we you need to set this content size then we get the container view and edit it as, to the, as a sub view to the my scroll view and container view is placed in the center uh, it stretches top anchor to top anchor width anchor is width anchor bottom anchor to bottom anchor so it takes up the whole my sc scroll view now we add the image view uh, as a sub view to the container view and image view left anchor is left anchor top to top right to right and uh, height is constant to 200 and uh, we set the image to the past data image so we have the past data tuple here and uh, it can be set from another view so uh, any data that is set here will show up in this view in this tuple we have title image price we have a tuple here so that we can access it like past data dot title past data dot image past data dot price so we here we have past data dot image and then we have the label title uh, label title height is going to be 50 and we set the text of it to the past data dot title then we have the label price which is placed below the label title its height is going to be 40 and uh, we set its text to past data dot price then we have the label description uh, it's placed below the label price and we set the text some random text here and then we set label description as size to fit so that it adjusts its height to the contents and uh, size to fit requires that the label description a uh, number of lines is also set to zero uh, if you have not set this number of lines to zero then the size to fit is not gonna work and also uh, you have to have uh, auto layout constraints on the label description if you have fixed width height for the label description then also it's not gonna work so now we have all the views we need so let's go back to view controller and grab everything and paste here okay so in this view uh, we import google maps google places and here i have a structure for my place because place structure provided by google places uh, has a lot of information that we don't need so we are going to extract the information that we need uh, in this my place structure so we are going to need a name latitude longitude so we are going to extract that from the place now in the view controller it must conform to the cl location manager delegate a gms map view delegate auto complete view controller delegate and text field delegate here uh, we have a marker for current location we have location manager uh, we have a chosen place which is set to my place that the structure we have declared here uh, we have declared this chosen place 
just in case we need to pass around this place to other another view now we have custom marker width and height so this is gonna be the marker width and height of this marker and then uh, for the data in the in the information window we have declared an array of tuples so preview demo data is title we are gonna need a title an image and price I have placed three data here and then in the view did load we set the title uh, background color to white and uh, my map view delegate to self my map view is declared below I will show you and now we need to set the delegate of the location manager we need to get authorization of the user to get the location of the user so uh, here we request the authorization then we start updating location and uh, we also start monitoring changes in the location then here uh, we have called the setup views uh, here we need slice google maps and here we set the search text field delegate to self now let's go and see what variables we have here what views so we have a variable for my map view which is a google map and then we have a variable for text field search we have button my location uh, this is the button my location this is already provided by google map but in order to customize it or place wherever you want you have to make your own button and then we have the restaurant preview view uh, this one now uh, we add the map view as a sub view to our view uh, we set the top anchor to top anchor left to left right to right and we set the bottom anchor to bottom anchor and extend it by 60 so that the uh, center of the map goes down so that we can see our search bar uh, when this view shows up now we place the text field search on top so text field search top anchor is the uh, views safe area layout guide dot top anchor we have put safe area layout guide here because safe area layout guide starts from here if you don't put safe area layout guide then the top anchor start will start from here and your text field will be placed here so we don't want that we want to place it here so we have safe area layout guide dot top anchor and then we have put a constant 10 here because we want uh, 10 points of gap here now left anchor is left anchor uh, shifted by 10 right anchor is right anchor shifted by 10 and the height anchor is a constant and then we have this setup text field function which takes this text field and uh, sets an image to it let's get this this marker image and place it in our assets folder so here uh, I have the pin so I'm just gonna drop it here and then I have this my location button which just looks like this so I have got all the images now let's go to the view controller and now we see our image here so we pass the image we pass the text field and this method then takes that image and text field and uh, places the text field uh, right at the start of the text field so now we have this restaurant preview view we just initialize it with 0 0 x y position and uh, how much width we want it to be we want to take up the full width of the view so it is frame that width and height we want it to be 190 and then we have button my location you, uh, you can place it anywhere you want on the view i have placed it bottom left corner now let's see all the delegates so from the top we have text field delegate uh, when the this text field is clicked uh, we want uh, it to take us to the search location uh, screen so we have gms autocomplete controller uh, the google uh, map already provides this autocomplete view controller so we can use that we delegate it to self uh, we need to provide it a filter if, if if you want to filter countries or anything you can do it here but uh, it's just gonna be empty for now so autocomplete filter is filter and uh, we want the location manager to start updating location and then we present the autocomplete controller so now uh, here we have a google autocomplete delegate so this is called when did autocomplete with succeeds with a place so you search for a place we click on uh, some place and then uh, that's when this method is called so we get the latitude and longitude of a place place dot coordinate dot latitude and longitude uh, we then show party markers around that area which the user searched for then we get a camera and uh, uh, we set its latitude longitude to the one we got from here we set the zoom level to 17 and uh, then we set our map views camera to this camera 
and then we also uh, fill in the text field search text with the formatted address of the place and then we assign this chosen place that we have declared here on the top with a my place name is going to be placed our formatted address latitude and longitude and then we create a marker we position it at the longitude longitude we got from here we set the title as the place name we set the snippet of the marker as place formatted address and then we add it to the my map view now we dismiss the search location view now the autocomplete can also fail for some reasons so yeah, that is handled here did fail autocomplete with error and uh, if the user uh, clicks the cancel button this method is called now this is the function in it google maps that we need to call to initialize google maps here we call it in view did load so it just takes camera we provide it some latitude and longitude random values and then we place a camera on the map we set the delegate of the map to self and uh, we set the my location enable to true so that it shows our location and then we have cl location manager delegates here so if we, it fails to get our location then uh, this method is called it fail with error otherwise uh, if it gets our location then did update locations is called uh, we set the location manager delegate to nil because we don't want it to repeatedly search for our current location and then we stop updating location this is an array of locations uh, so we get last location of locations we get the latitude we get the longitude of this location and then we set up a camera then we set the my map view to animate to that camera then we place the party markers at that latitude longitude whenever we get the current location of a user uh, we saw three restaurant markers there and uh, this method is called when a marker is tapped so when you tap a marker we 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 have set this cursor marker view so this is the view that shows up so we get that marker icon view as a custom marker view so that we can customize it and if, if it's not our custom marker view then it returns so that we don't get any crashes and then we get the image of the marker view because we have set an image uh, we then again make a custom marker with custom marker view frame the width is gonna be custom marker width custom marker height that we declare here on the top image we are going to provide the same image we are not going to change the image so border color is going to be white when you tap a pin it's going to change its border color to white so that we know it's, it has been tapped and uh, we set the tag at the same tag of the custom marker view so uh, the only thing we need to change here is the border color and then we again set the marker icon view to the custom marker with the changed border color then we return false now here uh, we have google map delegates so marker info contents actually this is also the google map delegate so let's set it from here and paste it here so so this is called when the when a marker is tabbed when a marker is tabbed what view to show is called from here so uh, marker info contents refers to uh, this view so what view to show there uh, you return here so we get the custom get our custom marker view here uh, we get the data that we need to provide to that custom marker view so preview data demo custom marker view dot tag so we need to get this custom marker view to get the tag so that we can determine which data to show in the restaurant preview view so we get the data appropriate data from preview demo data from the tag and then we get the restaurant preview view and we call the set data because we have a set data method let's go to restaurant preview view and as you see we have a set data method here so this sets sets the title image and price appropriately and then we return this view now did tap info window off this method is called when the information window is clicked so this view is when this view is clicked this did tap info window off the method is called so we get the, our custom marker view we get its tag and uh, we call the method restaurant tabbed with the tag that we got from here so let's see restaurant tabbed method so here we have restaurant tab and it takes the details we instantiate the details we see this one we set its past data that we have declared here this past data to the preview demo data at the index tag and then we get the navigation controller and push this view controller to the navigation controller now when we close that information window this method is called so there are two ways to close this information window either we can click off the map or we can again click on this marker to close it either way this method is called did close info window off and we again get our custom marker we don't need to do this 
so we again create a custom marker a custom marker view with xy position 0 0 custom marker with custom marker right we set the image we got from here we set its border color to dark gray and then set the tag we got from here from the custom marker view so the only thing it changing here is the this border color and then we set the marker icon view to the custom marker so it changes the border color so now this is the so party markers that takes a latitude longitude and first we clear the map so it clears out any uh, map pins it has already now we run a loop for 0 1 and 2 and uh, we get a random number from here uh, arc from random uniform method 30 so it gets uh, any integer from 0 to 30 and then we divide it by 10,000 so that we get a very small distance from our current location then we get the marker here and then we create the custom marker custom marker view frame 00, zero custom marker width and height uh, we set an image uh, we set the border color to dark gray tag is equal to i so tag is gonna range from 0 to 2 and uh, we set the marker icon view to custom marker and then we again get a random number or for random uniform 4 so it's gonna generate any integer from 0 to 3 then we have this if else conditions here we just have to place this marker somewhere around our position so that's why we generate this random integer if it's zero then uh, we add this random number to latitude subtract this random number from the longitude otherwise if it's one we also place it somewhere near we perform different operations and we position it randomly and then we place the marker on our map so that places three markers on our map at random locations around our the latitude and longitude provided here and since we have made our custom uh, my location button this one so we need a method for that uh, which is called when that button is clicked so button my location here we add the target and it calls the button my location action so button my location action is declared here so they'll we get the location from my map view dot my location and uh, we check to see if the location is not nil and if it's not nil we animate to that location okay so i think we have covered everything we also need to provide in the p list when the location manager asks for the permission to uh, access their location it shows a description there and we have to provide what description why do we need to access uh, their locations let's get that from here i'm just gonna place uh, app needs access to your location so now let's run the app and see if it's working so i'm going to change the simulator to six and let's just run the app so the app is running and it asks for location access so app needs to access your location for stuff so if you don't allow it it's not gonna be able to access my location so i allow it and now the map shows it shows my location it shows three pins uh, we saw three restaurants near me so if i click any of them uh, the border changes to white and this information window shows up and if you click on the information window it takes to the description of the restaurant if you go back you can click off the marker to hide it you can click another marker and then we see that restaurant's description now if we have to search for a place we can just click this and search for a place let's see los angeles and uh, this is the marker that it places to show your location los angeles you search for this place and uh, it also places three uh, markers near you so three restaurants and you can click any of that and uh, you can anytime click on this my location button it takes you to the your location so uh, we have covered everything that's it for this tutorial thank you so much for watching please like comment and subscribe and i will see you in my next video